If you're getting ready for the April 8th, 2024 eclipse, you're probably getting concerned about cloud cover as well. Cloud cover will obviously ruin your view of the eclipse, and so picking the best spot can be very, very critical. However, cloud cover forecasts more than a couple days in advance are not going to be particularly accurate, especially during the spring season where you have a lot of thunderstorm activity. So anyway, today we're going to look at some historical cloud cover data as well as where to get some cloud cover forecast data that you can use leading up to the event to help plan your last minute decisions on where to go. So anyway, if you are planning to travel for the eclipse, it is important to get as close as you can to the central track of the eclipse. You don't have to be right near the middle, but it does help to be, you know, at least several dozen miles away from the edges. This plot here showing the eclipse path over northern Arkansas has several lines there that show a number of minutes how long the eclipse lasts. So across the central corridor, the total eclipse lasts four minutes, but those contours then are three, two, and one minute right just away from the edge of the totality. Notice that there is a big difference right along the edges of the eclipse track from basically nothing to a minute to two minutes to three minutes, all within a couple dozen miles or less of the edge of the eclipse track. So if you can get farther away from that edge, you do get a dramatically longer total eclipse. And again, this can be important when you're trying to figure out where to go at the last minute based on cloud cover. This plot here shows historical cloud cover averages for April 8th at the rough time of totality across the U.S., with the oranges and red showing a high percentage of historical times that have had clear skies, and the areas in gray showing a higher probability of having cloudy skies based on historical averages. So the 50-50 line is basically the edge of that initial darker yellow color. So pretty much from Missouri down through Arkansas, Oklahoma, and Texas, you are looking at generally around or greater than a 50% chance of having clear skies based on historical data. But north of there, things do degrade. And obviously, not surprising as you get into the northeast uh, at that time of year, there is a strong tendency to have cloud cover across those areas. But again, it does vary dramatically from year to year. This loop here shows conditions around 1 p.m. Central Time for every year from 1979 to present. And so you can get a general idea how cloud cover has varied on that date across the U.S. There are some years that have had large sprawling storm systems and widespread cloud cover, other years with widespread clear conditions. So it does vary dramatically from year to year. So you can find the area that you plan to watch the eclipse, count the number of years that had clear conditions in those areas, and then divide by 45 to get the rough fraction of years that have tended to have clear skies at that location. Again, the weather can vary dramatically from year to year, so uh, even though you might pick an area that historically is pretty clear, this might be the year that it's quite cloudy. So now the question is, how do you figure out this year how the clouds are going to end up around that time? So one thing to do in the days leading up to the eclipse is to look at forecast model guidance for cloud cover. Uh, Tropical Tidbits is one of my favorite sites for looking at forecast model data. And they also do have satellite data on here as well. So if you click on satellite imagery, you can view satellite data for land areas, uh, not just in the U.S., but other areas as well. But if you go to, the, go to land areas, click on the U.S., click on visible, which will give you the higher resolution data, but obviously only usable during the day, you can see a high resolution satellite loop of the U.S. and see exactly where all the cloud cover is occurring. They also have these meso regions, which have much higher resolution satellite data. So if you click, click on meso, and this first one here is across portions of the central U.S., you can load that and zoom in, and you can see you have much higher resolution cloud cover data. And this can be very, very helpful, especially the day of the eclipse, to see where the clouds are at, where they're moving, and when they might possibly get into your area just based on the satellite imagery that you have available. But obviously, looking at forecasts for cloud cover can be very helpful as well. If you click on the forecast models page, you can look at the forecast data from many, many models, both global models as well as higher resolution mesoscale models that just focus on the U.S. But if you go to the mesoscale one, you click on, say, the NAM three kilometer run. If you then click on upper dynamics on the bottom, you can click on simulated IR satellite imagery. And then you can also select regions and click on a region of interest to get a better close up view of that region. 
and then you can scroll through on the timeline through the next 60 hours or click on an individual hour on the right hand side and see the cloud cover forecast for that particular time. So if you click on lower dynamics, you can click on low cloud fraction and that will show you where low clouds are forecast by this particular model run. So the combination of the two can be helpful. Uh, oftentimes you can have low shallow clouds that while they're not very thick, they are very optically dense and you're not gonna be able to see the eclipse through them. And so that they can be very important as well as the higher thinner clouds, which you may still be able to see the eclipse through. Now, one thing to note is that if that low level cloud cover is convective in nature, it will tend to diminish as the eclipse progresses because temperatures are cooling, solar radiation is decreasing, and as a result, that does tend to promote the dissipation of cloud cover leading up to the time of totality. But if you do have a very thick layer of cloud cover, the odds of that dissipating during the eclipse is pretty low. But this can be a very handy tool in the day leading up to the eclipse to get an idea of where cloud cover is likely expected during the time of the eclipse. And that can help you make some decisions, uh, you know, the day of, of where you might want to actually travel to. But obviously looking at the satellite data during the day of the eclipse will be very, very helpful for making those last minute decisions. I would also recommend checking out your local National Weather Service page. All of them are setting up pages that have information dedicated to the eclipse, such as timing of the event, uh, forecast cloud cover, although that won't be there quite yet at the time of this recording because we're still too far out, but they will be updating that type of information as well. And so great resources to check out. You can find your local weather service page by going to weather.gov and then clicking on the map uh, for the area of interest, either where you live now or where you plan to travel to. Anyway, that was just a quick look at some historical cloud cover as well as one of the, ver the very many sites that are available for looking at forecast cloud cover, which can help you make those last minute decisions uh, leading up to the April 8th, 2024 total eclipse. Anyway, that's all for now and thanks for watching. Bye.